Um, Sheriff, I, I wonder your immediate thoughts on the president getting set to unveil this executive order that would limit asylum requests or border crossings once a cer certain threshold is met each day. Well, the first thing that comes to my thought, and I heard about this over the weekend for the first time, this is not something that the sheriffs at the national level were engaged with. Uh, I talked to my own mayor at an event this week and asked him if he knew anything about it. He did not. So, again, we're going to we're going to see what this new development is through the president, through the national media and local media. That's how we get our intel reports. But the first thing that comes to my mind, too, is the fact that where we've been for three and a half years. Why now? You always got a question. Why now? And I'm all about doing something on the border. Don't get me wrong. We have to do something as a country. So I'm all about that. Why now? Well, let me follow up with that by with, with, with this. A, a bipartisan group of senators, you'll recall, we talked about this back in uh, February, I believe it was, unveiled a plan that would reform the asylum system um, because we have thousands of people who are waiting months, if not years, if not multiple years, to, to, to hear their claims. Uh, independent Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema was among the chief negotiators and Former President Trump said, man, it's not a good idea. Let's, you know, we need this as an election issue. I encourage my Republican friends and colleagues in the in Congress to sink it. And they did. And I wonder, you know, how you grapple with the fact that we could have had a bill at least debated in the Senate earlier this year. Well, I can say this to you is and I've told Senator Sinema this, I told Senator Kelly, we look for opportunities to engage. We look for opportunities to come together to make what's best for our community. At the end of the day, it's not about us. It's about how we serve and secure a border and how we serve our community under public safety. So that's number one. Number two is the fact that it, I'm probably going to go with this. I got people behind me. That's why I'm throwing me a little bit. So, uh, so hold on, Eric. Can I stop you for a minute on this interview just for a second? Gentlemen, it's right here. Go on in there. Go on, take a look at it. Feel free. I'm on doing an interview, so feel free. And I'll be with you in just give me about five minutes. Okay, okay sorry. Is everything okay, sure? Yeah, I'm good. I just okay. got five things going on at the same time. And letting this no problem. 30 minute window is like five things. But uh, so that's what the engagement. And the other thing I would say when it comes to this bill, and, and I, I said it before and I'll say it again. As a sheriff, I did everything I could to engage the collective parties from mayors to sheriffs to our congressional Senate people. We first found out about the bill with Senator Sinema's office uh, when they called me. I, I invited them 48 hours later in Washington, D.C. We had a national sheriff's meeting. Hundreds and thousands of sheriffs would be there, invited them to come address the sheriffs and let's talk about this. Eric, nobody showed up. That was on a Sunday in their backyard. Not one person to include a staffer showed up both Republicans and, and also uh, Democrats showed up for that. That was disheartening to your American sheriffs. So that's where I say a little bit of a frustration on that level. We want to see something that's done right. We want to see something that's been engaged by all parties so we serve all the people. When was this? When when was this? When the bill was being worked out? When the, the bill was announced, uh, the week the bill was announced, uh, when we were got first notified of this. So I got a call on a Friday. I was in D.C. on Sunday for national sheriffs uh, to include our border security for sheriffs throughout the country. They had an open invitation to come address. I changed the agenda. They wished if they showed up to make sure they had the floor because that's how important it is to America's sheriffs. Not one person or a staffer showed up. So, again, this goes back to do you really want your communities involved or are we doing this for political reelection or political parties? And I don't uh, – bottom line is this. We got to protect America. We got to protect our country. We need we need executive decisions. We need laws that enforce the rule of law, but also protect the people. Just, I just want to follow up. So, 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 so the, the schedule was changed because this is news to me. Senators were invited, or their staffs, right, and Congress, Congress, congressmen and women as well, and no one showed up that weekend. Nope. I got a call on a Friday afternoon from a staffer from Senator Sinema's office saying, Sheriff, we need to get sheriff support. And this is what the bill is. I had no idea what the bill was. And I chaired the National Sheriff Association. I said, how ironic. I said, I appreciate you calling me Sunday 
I will be in Washington, D.C., down the street from the Capitol. You have an open invitation to come to hundreds and thousands of sheriffs because this was the National Sheriff Association Winter Conference. And this was our border security meeting on that Sunday. The, the staffer said, I will let the senators know. I'll let uh, the parties know because this was coal um, bipartisan bill. Nobody showed up on Sunday. They called me Monday and said, Sheriff, uh, we need your support. I said, I had an open invitation for you yesterday. Nobody showed up. On Monday, uh, I made calls to get the, our national sheriff's people involved in this. And, um, and again, nowhere, Eric, I'll tell you, nowhere did discussion with any sheriff that I was in any room when we talked about this ever talk about President Trump or his wishes. He has nothing to do with what decision sheriffs make in this country. Uh, we do it because it's right for the people we serve. I, I'm, I'm curious what you would tell those in Washington, including President Biden, including the senators and, 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 and members of Congress who ultimately are tasked with making immigration policy. We haven't seen meaningful immigration reform in this country in about 30 years or more. What would you tell them as somebody who um, leads a, a department of, 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 of deputies and law enforcement officials on our southern border? I would tell them this. They were elected by their communities, by the citizens of this country, respectively, within their respective districts. They were in states to protect them. No more priority of any elected officials to protect the people they serve. We have become so divided in this country. And I say this, 51 percent of Congress and this administration over the last three and a half years have watched a border that's become wider and wider open, where the country becomes more and more divided. We got to stop protecting the parties and start protecting the people that we were elected to do. And until we do that, and we got to prioritize the fact that the rule of law needs to stand in place. We have a rule of law that will work, but until we, we engage it, we acknowledge it, and we prioritize our borders in this country, and that's both parties, we're going to be in trouble. I have two last questions. The CBP numbers have showed that 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 in April there was 179,000 migrant encounters along the southern border. That's from California all the way to to to, to Texas. Um, but that number is sharply down from 302,000, the historic high last December. So, are you seeing a change? Are you seeing a difference over the last few months? So I'll put it in perspective in the fact that what we see in Cochise County as part of the Tucson sector, specifically to Cochise County, is the gotaways. So we, whether they're coming across the border for give ups, as a lot of those numbers are uh, describing, we deal with the gotaways and we have at a record number over the last three years. So we still see the influx of smuggling. We still see the high speed pursuits and, and the crime associated with. So we see maybe a small tick when it comes a downward tick when it comes to what's going on. But what's going on here in this county, and I, this is something else I say all the time, Eric, and I think it's important to say it on this interview, is the fact that every day that we ignore what's going on on our borders, every day that we don't prioritize what's going on on our border, is the day we see a tragedy or we see a life change in this country. We have to, whether it be poisoning of uh, fentanyl, whether it's a, a juvenile involved in smuggling, whether it's a death in my county or somewhere else. We have to do a better job of collectively working together, state, local, and federal, because that's what the people expect. Is it is a cap on a daily threshold of asylum seekers or or border crossing something you would support, something you would get behind? I, I know I know you've had some disagreements with President Biden in the past. My biggest disagreement with President Biden, let me just clarify this for the record, is it's fair to engage sheriffs in this country. We have tried to engage our president. Congress does what they do. We've talked to many congressmen, I've testified many times, and, and still we have no results. We have tried to engage this president to work with sheriffs as representatives of their respective communities. And that is, but that's where my frustration starts with, Eric. And we've seen for three and a half years a lot of tragedies. We could do a better job. That's where I get frustrated. Is, is this something that you can get behind, this possible executive order that could come as soon as tomorrow? I will support something because right now we have nothing. So I will support something. Uh, add that to the rule of law, which is already currently exists. We could do something, but we have to get engaged. Just like I, I have to hear through the rumorville through media that there's even an executive order coming out. Think about that for a minute. It's not like the sheriffs on the border 
that are engaged in this haven't been active with this and asking for attention, acting, ask, asking for solutions, but I hear it this way. So again, um, we will sit back, we'll see what's announced tomorrow, but I don't turn my head when it comes to a public safety issue. That's what I represent. So whatever it is, we'll look at it, we'll see if it's better. If it is, I'll support it 100%. So I, or we told you about this. I had another media call me this weekend. So one media had you called me and then I had Understood. another media this morning call me. That's how I'm okay. finding out about it through media reports. Hey, we want to do a report. I had to go look and see what we even were going to talk about today. So again, that's how I'm finding out what's going on. I still don't know exactly what's going to be announced tomorrow. But again, if you're truly engaged with government collectively, I'll tell you right now, we can do amazing things in this country. That's what's fractured. My final question is a follow up to that. And I, I always appreciate your time because you're you're always so thoughtful um, and you always make me think, too. So I really appreciate that. No problem. Um, what do you think it is that we miss on this issue or other issues when it comes to politics and the border? What is it that we're missing? We're missing rational reality. We truly are. You look at narratives on both sides. But if you get in the middle, you find the people. That's what we're missing. We got to get back to the people and the rational reality, not the irrational, the extreme. I'm talking about rational reality, what we see daily on our border, what the people talk to me about daily. You hear the New York Mayor uh, Adams, you hear Bowser out of Washington, D.C., and Denver mayors and other ones talking about it. Hey, I need money. I need money. Let's get back to rational reality. Let's talk about border security. Let's talk about immigration reform, but let's do it collectively. That's what's missing. Peace County Sheriff Mark Daniels, the chair of the National Sheriff's Association and longtime border sheriff here in our community. Thank you, as always, for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry for the interruptions. I mean, like five. No, 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 no. Here. You're good. You're good. Please, please take All care right. of yourself. Please take you care too. of yourself. Thanks. This should, this, should, this, this should air tonight. Okay. Sounds good. I'll look for it. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Take care, Mark. Bye-bye. See you, Eric.